We're gonna go for a little drive. We're gonna go for a little cruise in your convertible E30. Top down's for you. Top down, let's do it. Let's, let's move over there. Let's check it out. That means you have to air up a little bit, right? I uh, can air up a little bit. I think you might have to air it up just a little bit just to move over bit. there. Yeah. Turning radius, yeah, definitely. All right, let's do it. Let's get in. Car inbound. Oh, fancy. All right, be gentle. Okay. She's a little rough on the inside. It was a SEMA crunch. I, yeah. All right, let's Start do it. Up. You know, two car dudes in a convertible. Day after SEMA, going for a cruise. Let's go. It's not a bad way to be in Vegas. <laughs> I down. love it. Top down, hanging out. Also, best part, engine out. <laughs> the engine is just out, dude. Oh my God. <laughs> is it weird that you could just see that motor right there? It makes it feel like I'm in a plane, so it's very interesting. <laughs> I just know if the red mark is facing forward, I'm going in the right direction. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, time to air out. Yo! On the ground. So we're out here featuring Tyler's E30 BMW with the Live to Offend kit designed by Kaiza, powered by what? A Gallo 12, Gallo 24? What is it? Uh, it Gallo is, 6. It's a Gallo 6, it's a Gallo straight 6. Mm -hmm. It's an uh, S52 out of an E36 M3. Gallo S5, or Gallo 52. Exactly. <laughs> My own little creation. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're, we're saying Gallo because Tyler's last name is actually Gallo. But uh, thanks for bringing this for us. I saw this at the show and I was just kind of blown away just because we feel super honored to be kind of a part of LTO history and that we were able to shoot the first video of Kaiser's very first build. And it just kind of really changed the game for me in terms of body kits because I've said it time and time again, you know, it's kind of unfair a lot of times for me to have to compete against Kaiza, even though it's not like we're really competing, but you know, we're really good friends and we're lucky to be able to work together. And he actually designed one of my older SEMA cars, but uh, he's, he's designing things and he's photographing in the digital world, things that he can make up in his mind. Whereas I'm limited to the physical world, which is not so bad. I mean, considering, look at this background. It's it so beautiful. Digital. Yeah, but uh, now we're a couple of years in and now that we're actually seeing customer builds, this is, this is what this is, right? You actually bought the kit and you built your convertible E30. Yeah, absolutely. So just being a part of the history of what Kaisel created, um, you know, I agree that with this body kit, when I saw it, I saw the spoof on uh, Instagram that they had posted about doing an E30 convertible. And I reached out and said, hey, I have one, I wanna do it. And they said they weren't really gonna do it. And so I pushed them and said, I wanna be the first to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And part of it is because the actual kit on the front end is the same, but there's some things that are changed on the back end. Uh, so on an E30 platform, the front and rear fenders uh, are the same. However, on the rockers, when it comes down to this side skirt. So this is the coupe side skirt, but I actually had to remold the rocker because it actually flattens out for the strength because there isn't the roof. And so this whole section had to be cut out and then I actually had to mold it to the actual car. Mm. Um, and so that was the big issue with it. And now that it's been figured out, um, rumor has it there's gonna be more convertibles floating around now. Hmm. Yeah, I think it looks really cool. Uh, it actually flows pretty well. Absolutely. Let's talk about the power plant. Yep. Um, so it's an S52 out of an E36 M3. I had seen Jimmy Oaks do the build on his E30 uh, and decided to do the ITBs. And it was such a great platform that I just felt like fit the look and feel of the car. I really wanted that almost retro DTM feel. Um, and so they're S54 ITBs, the conversions by Rabid Racing Development. 
and it just bolts up. There's a lot of little details that you have to do. It simplifies things, it complicates things, and at the end of the day, I just think it fit exactly what I was aiming for with this build. Attached to the engine is the E46 M3 six-speed transmission, and then it's the uh, LSD out of a Z3M. So it's the basically the best one you can get for an E30 to bolt it up. So I'm not just rocking the M badge, it really is an M power plant throughout the entire car, um, just under a, a 92 325i convertible. Mm. Started its life as an automatic. Mm, okay, all right. And how was the condition when you started? It was pretty rough. It came out of a guy's backyard, uh, if you'll believe it or not, especially with the prices of E30s now. I picked it up for $1,000. But my painter at DreamWorks Customs, he really just helped take it to that next level by getting it as shiny as what it is. Um, so I received the car back October 1st from the paint shop. Uh, so 28 days from Shell to SEMA. Was it originally black? It was. It was originally the Schwartz, and so I just wanted to stay true to the BMW heritage of what the car is, and I felt the body kit spoke for itself. I didn't think we needed to do anything too outlandish, uh, keep it black, and let it shine. Yeah, this definitely kind of reminds me of uh, Kaiser's first LTO build that was kind of like a satin black, and uh, when he first told me that it was black, Sometimes it's just hard to kind of communicate the lines of the car if it is a satin finish, especially when it's black, because it's, it's you know, with, with this kind of finish, the car is a mirror and it's reflecting all this amazing, beautiful surroundings. But when it's satin, it's like, hmm, it's kind of soaking up a lot of the reflection and color. But uh, the lines of the kit, the way it sits, Incredible. So uh, let's talk about the wheel, tire, combo, and air suspension combo that you have going. Absolutely. So the wheels are Rotiform LHRs that were custom built for the car. Uh, Rotiform did an amazing job on them. Obviously, I really wanted to go for that BBS RS Plus look, and I think they nailed it. Tires, you know, just so much appreciation for Toyo with the R888s. Those have been great. And then uh, CA Tune provided the airlift system, so it is. CA Tune airbag setup with uh, airlift P3 management. And I haven't been able to drive it too much, but I love the way it feels so far. This is so cool. I love the design that kind of incorporates, you know, just the part of the kit. Yeah. I love that. One of my favorite things about the kit really is the louvers that stick out of it. And I noticed that, you know, some of the cars don't use them. Um, you know, some of them bolt them right up and I really wanted to form them you know, specifically to make them shine at night. So I wrapped them around the tail light, and then even in the front, I contoured them so they wrapped really around almost like claws to the front. And then to add that touch of like Alpina vintage with the lines. Uh, can we take a look at the air setup in the Absolutely. back? I know this is really special. Now, I like to use my trunk, so there's a bit of stuff in here. Mm -hmm. It's cold this morning, I'm in a convertible, so you gotta have the parka. Yeah. And so this is the P3 management. There's uh, two five gallon tanks, two pumps, mm -hmm. and then this mess of orange. So that way I could get the car dusted off for you, Larry. I wanted to make sure. So, <laughs> well, I have so you, a... can, you can actually use this. This is functional. Absolutely. So if we need to spray it, it works. <laughs> or you can fill up air pressure. Absolutely. Or you can use whatever you need, power tools if you need to, Absolutely. air tools. Uh, I mean, it might not do too much with the air tools, but it'll definitely air your tires up and uh, <laughs> you know air your car off. As That's as awesome. Blow it off. That was one of the things I found funny about SEMA is everybody was asking me. I had a tool bag back here. I had all this equipment. I had a jack. And so people kept asking me, you know, hey, do you have this tool? Do you have that tool? So it was nice to be a little bit of a lifeline during SEMA as well. And, and this being convertible, it was raining a little bit uh, during the show. What did you do? Did you cover it at night? Or? I did, and it was uh, all thanks to Cover King in the SEMA crunch, I actually didn't end up getting the roof in in time. And so when I found out that the weather forecast was calling for some rain, which who would know here in Las Vegas, we'd get rain. Uh, but Cover King, I went in and just had a great conversation with them. Uh, they decided to sponsor the car. They provided a universal cover and it did exactly what I needed it to. It protected mm. everything about the interior. Let's talk about the interior. So is this something that you guys did? Yeah, so this was a design that I came up with and was brought to life by Ian's Interior here in Las Vegas. So if you can tell like the lineage of the car, it goes from a little vintage and a little modern. So this is E36 Hurricane fabric out of uh, Eurospec E36. And so I wanted to make sure that I had heated seats. You know, it's gonna be a pretty car. If I wanna have a lady in it, I wanna keep her warm. And so 
put the heated seats in it, beautiful fabric, and I uh, wanted to represent the Recaro history with uh, BMW making these seats. That is very, very cool. I just kind of want to take a step back and kind of really appreciate this. Is this lip part of the original LTO kit? Yeah, so the lower valence that's down here is the main focus, and then this is uh, stage one, so you actually do get this splitter. So you can use it, you don't have to use it. I think it really adds an additional layer. Obviously it touches the ground, um, but you can get this in a carbon option as well, but this does detach. And then what is this, Das? Das Herb, Herb. Uh, that is our company. Uh, it's German, it means the heritage. And so it's all about our stories. Das Herb Collective is the full company name. And so collectively, your story, my story led us here today and it's gonna take us to the next steps forward together. So it's all about bringing brands and individuals together on a grassroots level and showing that the automotive culture really does connect us all across the world. In the past year that we've been in, there's no animosity. It's just good car people love good car people. And so that's what our brand is all about. That's awesome. I love it. So. How hard was it for you guys to fit all of this in such a small amount of time? It's amazing that you even made it to the show with that little time. I appreciate that. Yeah, um, in all fairness, I did do a full dry run on the car because I wanted to make sure that if I did get into a crunch, I knew what was going on. And so, like I mentioned, October 1, it was a shell and it was literally dedicating every single day, you know, 12, 14 plus hours, um, you know, having people come over and help here and there. It, it was definitely a crunch, but I knew that it was uh, the mountain that I needed to climb. So it was, it was worth it. It was difficult, but I'm very proud of our team and our company and being able to make this actually come to life. Mm. So why a convertible? Did you see the kit first and then you found the car or what's, what was the order of all this? Um, so I'm originally from Ohio and I've had a number of E30s, but I always wanted a convertible and it's pretty cold in Ohio. So when I moved out West, it was really the next focus that I wanted was just to have an E30 convertible. It was in pretty rough shape. I debated back and forth on what to do with the body. And uh, I met Kaisel and Eric actually in 20, was it 2018? I think we had Ross's car out there at uh, McGuire's booth. And I just absolutely fell in love with the kit. And at that point I decided that's what needed to happen to this. And uh, when Eric posted on LTO the spoof about the convertible, I was like, I'm in Vegas, let's make this happen. I really want to be the first LTO vert. And so it was just serendipitous, actually. Mm. It looks great. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you so much for bringing this out for us to shoot. It's uh, something else. It just looks good. There's, I love the way it sits. I mean, just because... I don't know. I mean, it, when I look at E30s, I'm so used to just the, the coupe look, right? Mm -hmm. uh, with this being all almost flat, like this design is super nice, right? So it just looks really, really cool. BMW definitely knew what they were doing uh, in the 80s and 90s when they were designing cars. And so, yeah, I absolutely agree that the, the seamlessness of it is, uh, it's pretty special and I feel like it complements the kit very well. Just want to point out Kugel Works. This is a handmade uh, drag wing that's specifically for E30s. One of the things we got a lot of compliments just by keeping that raw effect. And then, as you mentioned, with the interior, the seats, uh, Bavarian restoration to this beautiful cluster. Oh my, yeah. My dream car is a Ferrari F40. And so I wanted some Ferrari touches. And so with the yellow RPM gauge, it just kind of gives it that exotic feel. Mm -hmm. It looks great. Love it. That's awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Larry. I really appreciate spending time with you. Very cool.